Hi everyone, this is Alex Savoy for uh, Discovery of Wine. Thank you for joining me once again. Uh, today I'm not going to open a bottle, unfortunately. I still have some left over from yesterday. Um, and plus it's mid-afternoon, I'm not going to start drinking mid-afternoon. Well, although tomorrow's the Super Bowl, so I probably will. Anyways, um, so what I want to talk about is um, Niagara region in Ontario. Been making wine for a long time. Um, probably in our minds is Canadian wine, not so much. Uh, maybe some of you have had wine from British Columbia, which is also good. Uh, but I went there to Niagara on the lake um, about three weeks ago uh, in early January. So more, no, like a month ago, actually, sorry. Um, and I was astonished by what I found there. Uh, first of all, I was going there mostly for Pinot Noir and Cabernet Franc, which are two uh, two grapes who, that I really enjoy. And uh, although I did find some good wines uh, from those varietals, uh, what really surprised me was first the Syrah that comes from that region. I've had a few uh, that were really more on the spicy and lighter side of Syrah. Um, a lot of black pepper taste that I found. So not at all what you're used to from maybe... Uh, Australia and um, California for Sierra, uh, but more, I'd say lighter bodied and uh, more on the spicy side than on the uh, fruity side. Anyways, uh, that's not what I wanted to uh, talk about today. I wanted to talk more about Rieslings. This was my discovery and compared to the other grapes, other varietals that are in Niagara, which I find a little bit exp expensive for what they offer. Uh, most of the ones I tasted were really good, but most of them a little bit overpriced, if you may. Uh, Rieslings were the hit of the day, or hit of the week, actually. Um, I found them to be really good and at a very decent price. Here, the one I had, I'm not going to open this, as I said, we'll have it some other time. Cave Springs 2009 Riesling Dolomite. Dolomite is one of the sites uh, that Cave Springs grows and uses to uh, to make their wine. Um, we I had this with raclette last weekend, and it was phenomenal. We had we're, there's a bunch of us. We had many different bottles of wine, and this was clearly the best, if you ask me. Um, a lot of green apple on the nose and in the mouth. Um, it was very refreshing. Um, it's not the acid was present, but it wasn't overbearing, and uh, there was a minerality that was really really refreshing especially with the, the fatty cheese from the raclette. It's nice to have something to cut through that. And um, when I say minerality, uh, just to make sure we're on the same page, because I don't even know if it's the right way to use it. But for me, it's, it's like when you go up north and uh, you drink water directly from the source. Not, I'm not talking about bottled water. I'm talking about like fresh water, fresh water directly from the source. There's always that little taste feels like you're getting some of the minerals in your mouth uh, when you drink that water and it's so refreshing. Well, this is what I found in this wine that was uh, so, um, I wouldn't say exceptional, but that was so, uh, that m made it so great with raclette was that it made it so much easier to get through the meal rather than have red wine and then at the end of the meal you're just falling asleep because you had fatty cheese with red wine. And so uh, basically that's it. So my recommendations to you, this is not available at the SEQ, unfortunately, uh, but if you go to the Niagara region for whatever reason, stop by. Uh, there's tons of vineyards. There's quite a few that are nice. If you want some, uh, my thoughts on them, you can email me. I'll tell you which ones I really enjoyed. But um, anyways, uh, definitely worth a try. And wines in general from Niagara are definitely worth uh, seeking out because they're much better than what we think they are. So thank you for joining me and have a good day.